The human brain is a complex organism. Essentially, it is the power supply that directs your every function, such as breathing, sleeping, moving, and thinking. To this date, scientists agree that there's nothing more powerful than the human brain. It oversteps the most advanced supercomputer. It's far more superior than the strongest battery, and it has more available space than the best memory chips on the market. This article focuses on how the brain is able to retain more memory than any technological device. How does your brain know when to keep something and when not to? According to an interview April Holiday of WonderQuest held with USA Today, when you experience the world with your five senses, sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste, your brain is triggered to catalog whatever it is that you are experiencing. Interestingly, your brain knows to keep what your senses pick up, whether or not it consciously drew your attention. Your brain translates and catalogs cognitive ideas the same way because they are configured and extracted with sensual experiences. Even when you're not aware of your surroundings, your brain is, and it's working nonstop to store everything. Where does your brain store your memory? Everything that you've ever experienced is categorized and placed by the brain into one of three locations. Your sensory memory, your short-term memory, or your long-term memory. Depending on how subtle or predominant the experience was is how the memory's location is determined. Later, when you make an effort to retrieve some of your memory, such as where you put the remote or how to figure surface tension, you call upon the hippocampus a region in the brain that is responsible for the retrieval of such information. How does sensory memory work? Sensory memory can be accredited to one sense of direction. For example, say you've recently moved into a new home in the middle of the woods. You check the fridge and you realize that you're out of milk, so you decide to make a trip to the local dairy store. This will be the first time that you've driven into town from the new home and you're feeling a bit nervous as you are not sure whether you know the way or not. After a couple wrong turns, you notice that you've seen that fallen tree before, and that creek, and that hill. Now that you know where you've been, you know where to go. That was the work of your sensory memory. Sensory memory is located throughout areas of the cortex and is only held on to for a few moments. When those moments are up, the information will be divided into where your brain thinks it should go. Some may move into short-term memory, and the rest may go into long-term storage for later recollection. How does short-term memory work? Short-term memory is also known as primary or active memory. Anything that you are currently thinking or experiencing is found here. Similarly, psychologists refer to this type of memory as your conscience. It will always stem directly from your sensory memory as short-term memory is based on past experiences. Information does not stay here for very long. Typically, it has the capability of lasting one to five minutes before moving on to the final stage of memory development. You use short-term memory to recall the number of the doctor's office that you just looked up. You use it to get an a on the geography quiz that you studied for last minute, and you use it to pull the vehicle over when the sirens of the police car behind you are blaring. Don't think of short-term storage as a warehouse. Rather, think of it as a small cardboard box to use to move your office utensils to a different room. It can usually hold around six to eight pieces of information at a time before needing to filter it through. How does long-term memory work? Long-term memory refers to an individual's pre-conscious memory. Your pre-conscious memory consists of information that is not currently being thought about, but can easily be accessed with the right memory trigger. Patching the gap between long-term and short-term memory, this information is able to be brought up at any time. Long-term memory is what helps us recall the name of a distant cousin, or remember how to change a tire. The brain can store information here for up to several decades. Before any recollection can take place, the initial memory must go through three different processes, encoding, storage, and retrieval. 